GERD stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease. Reflux is quite normal for it to occur in small degrees. For some people, it may occur more frequently, and that can lead to injury of the esophagus. That's called esophagitis. It can lead to a chronic cough. It can lead to asthma. It can lead to pneumonia. It can lead to aspiration. The basic simple explanation is it is where the lower esophagus is exposed to the contents of the stomach for longer than ordinary frequencies and periods of time. GERD is one of those conditions that's on the rise in our society as obesity is on the rise and it parallels some of the unhealthy lifestyles that we see uh, in our society. Sweet, spicy, fatty, fried, greasy foods, most things that taste good will contribute to uh, uh, increased acid reflux. However, it is the quantities in which these are consumed which is the problem. One of the first line managements of GERD when it's diagnosed is lifestyle changes. Not lying down after eating, not eating large meals before nighttime, avoiding foods like peppermints, chocolate, coffee, tobacco. Eat small meals, eat frequent meals, don't eat close to bedtime. And by monitoring and picking up with repeated upper endoscopies, we're able to detect that worrisome change earlier and then take care of it earlier. For some individuals with long-standing GERD, there can be injury to the cells in the lower esophagus that they start to change their type. And that's a condition called Barrett's esophagus. The best way that I explain it to my patients is this. If I were to take the palm of my hand and pour acid on it, it would burn it. When this Barrett's esophagus is there and you have further acid exposure, that leads to mutations which can lead to cancer. Barrett's esophagus, one of the complications of GERD, doesn't cause any additional symptoms. So that's only going to be diagnosed with an endoscopy. And that endoscopy could be invaluable in terms of diagnosing the disease and, and maybe saving your life.